So today is uh, September 23rd, uh, 2023, and uh, today we will resume uh, the series of Te shows from the heart of Dogen's Shobogenzo, uh, translated by Norman Waddell and Masao Abe, uh, which I think is the, really the most elegant of all the current translations of Shobogenzo. Of course, it is not complete. It's the eight uh, most central fascicles uh, sections that they did. And these originally appeared well, maybe in the 80s in the Eastern Buddhist. Uh, I remember getting them through the Eastern Buddhist originally. And then it was published in this small book, Heart of, Shobo, uh, of Dogen Shobogenzo. So uh, we will look today at the second piece that Dogen wrote after returning from China. Uh, and this is the Ben Do Wa, uh, Negotiating the Way. And the introduction by Waddell and uh, Masao goes like this. Ben Do Wa, the second work Dogen wrote after his return from China, is a treatise on Zazen practice as the right entrance to the Dharma. A colophon states that it was written mid-autumn, the 15th day of the eighth month, uh, the third year of Kanji, which is 1231, by uh, Shaman Dogen, a Dharma transmitter who has traveled to China. Interestingly, uh, on the Japanese calendar, it says mid-autumn, 15th day of the eighth month. Could be 15th day of the ninth month on our calendar, which would be right about now, uh, but uh, only uh, uh, 800 years ago, or 900 years ago, uh, 800, 800 years ago. So, woo-woo, coming up uh, on a an anniversary. In any case, um, Bendoa seems to have been forgotten and almost unknown until it was rediscovered in manuscript in the Edo period. That would have been, oh, just after 1600, the Edo period went on to 1867, but this was rediscovered a good four or 500 years after Dogen was alive. Uh, it, it was gone till then. How about that? Uh, for hidden treasures uh, returning to human consciousness after strange periods of being uh, hidden away from us. Uh, I guess the time was right. Uh, that's in Tibetan Buddhism, that's a tradition of the terma, which are hidden treasures in the earth, sky, waters, trees, uh, in animals and people, which when the time is right will again reappear. Uh, it looks like uh, Ben Doa was one of those. Uh, gone for 500 or so years and then reappeared. So, 400 or so years. It was not originally attended for Shobogenzo. Uh, it does not appear in any of the early redactions of the work. It was first included in Shobogenzo in a manuscript version dated 1684. That was after it was refound. It was first published in a single volume edition in 1788. Remember, Dogen lived around 1100. Uh, so uh, interesting how long this was really hidden territory. Uh, it is said to contain, the Ben Doa is said to contain within it the essence of all 95 fascicles of Shobogenzo. It is thus an ent serves as an excellent introduction uh, to the work and no doubt because of that, modern editions include it as the first fascicle in the collection. In this way, it's sort of like the introductory koans, which uh, if you remember, I mentioned that when you complete the introductory koans, you basically have touched base with everything that you will run into in the formal koan books, the collections that follow. Uh, so you've tried your hand at little miniature versions of things that you will encounter in greater depth later on. In some ways, the, uh, the Bendoa is similar. In it, you will find the essence of all uh, that Dogen was saying in the entire uh, Shobogenzo. But it's there, touched base with in the Bendoa. So uh, it's divided into two sections. In the first, roughly one fourth of the whole, Dogen upholds the supremacy of Zazen practice vis-a-vis -vis all other Buddhist practices. He gives a concise exposition of the Jujuya Samadhi, uh, tells of his pilgrimage in search of the Dharma in Japan and China, and traces the transmission of this Samadhi 
from Shakyamuni Buddha through the Chinese Zen masters of the Tang and Sung dynasties. The remaining three quarters of the work is arranged as a series of questions and answers, a popular format in religious treatises of this nature. Dogen uses this format to, format to give and defend his reasons for advocating the merits of Zazen, and at the same time, time tries to counter such questions and doubts as might arise in the minds of Buddhist acolytes and adherents of other Buddhist schools uh, of that time. So uh, some of his questions and answers relate to fairly technical issues in Buddhist uh, teaching that is known at that time in Japan and clarifying it from the perspective of practice realization rather than theory. So here's the text and it's really, um, it's really a remarkable text. Uh, it's a text of tremendous insight, terrific writing. Uh, um, and um, something very unique. Uh, it really is quite an extraordinary, extraordinary document, though it's brief. So here we go. Buddha Tathagatas all have a wonderful means, unexcelled and free from human agency, for transmitting the wondrous Dharma and realizing supreme and complete awakening that this means is only passed directly from Buddha to Buddha without deviation is due to the Jijuya Samadhi, which is its touchstone. So a couple of points here. Uh, the Buddha Tathagatas all have a wonderful means, unexcelled and free from human agency for transmitting the wondrous Dharma. There's an old saying, the sage is not human hearted, uh, but this has nothing to do with being cold hearted and everything to do with this specific moment and at the same time, the big picture, all time and all space and this very caw of the crow, and this very pain in my knee and this very instant, just as it is. Uh, the Jujuya Samadhi, Jujuya Samadhi, um, the, uh, the note, um, the very good notes to this text, by the way, signifies a state of samadhi in which an awakened one receives, which is ju, and employs yu, the joy of awakening in himself, ji. Shakyamuni following his attainment is said to have been self-immersed in the joy of enlightenment. Uh, that was said to be for a period of three weeks. He was fully absorbed before he got up and began uh, taking on the task of teaching uh, what can't be taught. This personal enjoyment, jijuyu, is sometimes distinguished from ta jijuyu, which refers to the activity of aiding others, ta, to attain awakening so that they too can experience the joy of awakening. Here Dogen uses the term jijuyu samadhi in an absolute sense without distinguishing between it and ta jijuyu, with ji jijuyu, yuyu, being the basic source of ta jijuyu, and including Tajuya in its own development. For Dogen, the Jijuya Samadhi is Zazen, because Zazen is a fundamental practice that includes both self-awakening and the awakening of all beings in the universe. So to now to go back to the text, to disport oneself freely in this Samadhi, the right entrance is proper sitting in Zazen. The Dharma is amply present in every person, but without practice, it is not manifested. Without realization, it is not attained. So Dogen, you know, though Soto teachers, um, in Soto establishment, in any way, there are many Soto teachers who have not uh, fully uh, given themselves to the uh, establishment view, um, uh, he, he's saying there is realization. Uh, this is an important point because just sitting, as it's sometimes presented these days, can seem very much like mindfulness. That's not the point. Uh, without practice, it is not manifested, but without realization, it is not attained. So just sitting with no thought, uh, no aspiration better, towards 
awakening, realization is not quite Dogen in reality. And this shouldn't be skipped over. Uh, Dogen is talking about practice realization. Practice and realization as the same thing. Uh, and yet uh, there is attainment and there is practice. So it is not a question of one or many. Let loose of it and it fills your hands. It is not bounded vertically or horizontally. Speak it and it fills your mouth. Within this Dharma, Buddhas dwell everlastingly, leaving no perceptions in any sphere or direction. All living beings, that means you, that means me, that means your neighbor, that means all living beings, the crow, the dog, the tree, use it unceasingly with no sphere or direction appearing in their perceptions. The note here, this describes the two aspects of samadhi that are essentially inseparable. The aspect of Buddhas who dwell in this samadhi having no attachment to any sphere of the objective world and the aspect of all living beings who function in the same samadhi whose perceptions are not limited by any sphere of the objective world. Here perceptions are not only those of the five senses but include those of the conscious mind as well. That is thoughts. Nothing wrong with thoughts. It's our entanglement, our identification where it gets complex. It doesn't mean that uh, we should not uh, think. Uh, it just means mm, not thinking that the thought that you think is your whole being. Uh, it's a tool, a very useful one. It's a kind of consciousness and a very useful one. The negoti negotiation of the way with concentrated effort. So in other words, Zazen is an effort. It's not it's active, let's put it that way, not passive. The negotiation of the way with concentrated effort that I now teach makes myriad dharmas exist in realization and in transcending realization practices a total reality. In other words, uh, no clinging to realization, no clinging to I've got it, Aiken Roshi used to say, not enough yet, not yet enough, and even Shakyamuni Buddha is only halfway there. Uh, then when you are over the barrier with all bonds cast off, you are no longer affected by such segmented distinctions of me and here, you out there, me gaining, me losing, all of that. Segmented distinctions, they're, what shall we say, provisional, not absolute. After the religious mind arose in me, awakening the desire to seek the way, I visited many religious teachers throughout the country. I chanced to encounter the priest Myo Zen of Kenenji. Uh, Myo Zen uh, was a noted Rinzai teacher of the time, and Rinzai was the um, Zen practice in Japan of that period, which is um, 1100, early 1200s. Uh, and he studied on Mount Hiei, uh, became disciple of Issei, who was a uh, noted transmitter of Rinzai Linji Zen from China to Japan. Uh, and then in 1223, he went with, uh, to China with Dogen and remained there until his death a little over two years later at Tian Tung Chong Monastery. Uh, so... Um, Dogen says, swiftly past the frost and flowers of the nine years I studied with him. So for nine years, Dogen uh, did koan practice in Rinzai tradition, and he always honored and respected that. He did not uh, toss that aside in any way, shape, or form. Uh, during that time, I learned something of the manner of the Rinzai school as the chief disciple of the patriarch Issei, or Isai. It was Myozen alone who genuinely transmitted the Supreme Buddha Dharma. Uh, so again, people who say mm, that Dogen had no use for koans misread his, real, his total history of practice and uh, how he evolved and matured. None of Isai's other followers could compare with him. 
After that, I proceeded to Great Sung, China, where I visited leading priests of the Yangche region and learned of the characteristics of the five Zen gates. Finally, I practiced under Zen master Zhu Qing at Mount Taipei, and there I resolved the one great matter of Zen practice for my entire life. Then, when I returned home in the first year of the She Ting period of the Sung, that's 1228, my thoughts immediately turned to preaching the Dharma for the salvation of my fellow beings. It was as though I had taken a heavy burden upon my shoulders. Nevertheless, in order to await the time when I can work vigorously to this end and unburden myself of the desire to spread the Dharma far and wide, I am for the time being living like a cloud or water plant, drifting without any fixed abode, attempting to transmit through my actions the way of life, followed by outstanding masters, Zen masters of the past. But there will be those who have no concern for gain or glory, authentic religious seekers who desire for the way takes precedence over all else. They will be led vainly astray by mistaken teachers, and the right understanding will be arbitrarily obscured from them. They will become needlessly drunk with their own delusions and immersed forever in the world of illusion. How can the true seed of prajna be expected to quicken and grow within such seekers? How will they ever reach the moment of attainment? Dogen makes it clear, the moment of attainment, practice realization. It doesn't mean to separate yourself from the practice. It means right in the practice is realization, to give yourself fully to this. Let everything fall away. Aiken Roshi used to say, sink into Mu. Right where you are, sink into Mu. As I am now committed to a wandering life, to what mountain or river can they proceed to find me? It is a sense of pity for the plight of such people that now makes me write down for those who would learn to practice the way, the customs and standards of the Zen monasteries of Great Sung China that I saw with my own eyes and have learned, and the profound teachings of their masters that I have succeeded to and follow and transmit. I want such seekers to know the right Buddha Dharma. Here are its true essentials. At an assembly on Vulture Peak, the great teacher Shakyamuni Buddha imparted to Mahakashapa the Dharma that was subsequently transmitted from patriarch to patriarch, we might say ancestor to ancestor, down to Bodhidharma. Uh, that is case uh, number six in the Wumon Kwan, Gateless Barrier. Uh, Shakyamuni holds up a flower. Uh, so Dogen was quite conversant with these tipping points in the Koan curriculum. He next says, Bodhidharma traveled to China and conveyed the Dharma to Wei Ke. Uh, that's um, case 41 in the Wumon Kwan making the initial transmission of the Buddha Dharma to Eastern lands. It then made its way in direct personal transmission. And this is the essence of Zen practice, personal transmission. First realization, then Dharma transmission. They're not the same thing. Uh, they emerge into each other, as, as we'll see as we go through the curriculum uh, in, in ourselves. But by that time, oh, it made its way in direct personal transmission to the sixth patriarch, uh, that's Wei Nong. Uh, and his story is uh, case uh, 23 in The Gateless Barrier, uh, Think Neither Good Nor Evil. Uh, interesting story, interesting history there. Uh, by the time the genuine Buddha Dharma had beyond doubt spread extensively in China, oh, by that time it had spread in extensively in China, it appeared there with its essence unaffected by any ramifying doctrinal accretions, in other words, realization, pointing to original mind without reliance on specific texts, was the point of Bodhidharma's Zen, which he brought from India to China. 
The sixth patriarch had two superior disciples, Wei Zhang of Nanwei and Xing Si of Qingguan. As possessors and transmitters of the Buddha seal, they were masters for men and devas alike. Uh, you know, interestingly, uh, Buddhism does not get rid of uh, non-human beings, gods and such. Uh, remember, in Buddhist tradition, there are six realms. They can be taken mythically, literally, psychologically. Uh, there's hell dwellers, uh, hungry ghosts, or pretas, um, animal beings, which we can literally see with our physical eyes our senses, human beings, uh, warring spirits or asuras, and devas or gods. Uh, this was taken for granted that there were non-human intelligences and human beings were just one form of that. But it's humans and devas who have the opportunity to really practice realization. Humans and those particular gods who are interested in such things. Some gods aren't. Uh, their lives are just so pleasant they don't think about working on themselves. But some gods, the highest gods, are very intimate with the Dharma. So says traditional Buddhist uh, teaching. Their two schools spread and branched into five houses, the Fai Yan, Kuai Yang, Sao Tsung, Yun Men, and Lin Ji. Uh, at this time, only the Cao Tung and Lin Ji uh, remain in existence. Uh, Cao Tung is Soto, and Lin Ji is the Rinzai school. At present, in the Great Sung, the Lin Ji school alone is found throughout the country. He's speaking of Japan. So when Dogen returned to Japan from China, there was no Soto. There was no Cao Tung. Uh, that was something that he brought in a particularly Japanese manifestation. And he created something that uh, he felt was missing. Uh, and he had been deeply moved by uh, in his uh, practice with uh, his final teacher, Zhu Qing, or Ru Qing. Although among the five houses there are differences to be found, here's a very important point from Dogen's perspective. They are all equally based on the one Buddha mind seal. He makes no distinction in terms of quality between Soto, Rinzai, or any of the schools that have now disappeared. No difference in quality. They all emerge from real insight into our original nature, Buddha mind, non-self-centered mind, consciousness complete. Scriptural writings were transmitted to China from the Western lands during the latter Han dynasty. They spread over the empire. But even in China, no determination was reached about which of the various teachings were superior. Following the arrival of Bodhidharma from the West, these entangling complications were cut away at their source, and the one Buddha Dharma, free from all impurity, began to spread. We must pray that this will take place in our country as well, says Dogen. In other words, not theory, but the actual dropping away of the self-centered mind in a moment of true realization and then building a life, developing our character on this initial insight and going deeper and farther and integrating this into our life completely. Uh, not just settling into reading about it, uh, but to doing it. It is said that all the patriarchs and Buddhas who have maintained the Buddha Dharma have without question considered practice based upon proper sitting in Jujuya Samadhi, that is Zazen, as the right path that led to their enlightenment. All those who have gained enlightenment in India and China have followed in this way of practice as well. It is a matter of rightly transmitting the wonderful means in personal encounter from master to disciple and on the disciple sustaining, the disciples sustaining the true essence as received. So this is talking about doksan practice. Doksan literally means going alone. It is the practice of going alone to face the teacher and working on realizing more and more intimately 
we can say sometimes less intimately, sometimes more intimately, because it's not a straightforward road. It's back and forth, up and down. Uh, but actually doing that work with the teacher who has a foundation of realization, not just theory. So all those who have gained enlightenment took that path in, in China, India and China, as Wadogan says. Um, according to the authentic tradition of Buddhism, this personally and directly transmitted Buddha Dharma is the supreme of the supreme. From the first time you go before your master and receive his teaching, you no longer have need for incense offerings, homage, homage paying, lembutsu, that is reciting the name of the Buddha, penance disciplines, or sutra reading. These are, his point is not that we should ignore or get rid of any of those things, but they are not realization practice. They are subsidiary. They are helpful. They help develop character and personality. Uh, they help deepen faith, but they are not <coughs> realization. And his point is realization is what makes it real. So he says, just cast off, instead of doing all those things, just cast off body and mind in the practice of Zazen. Uh, someone once said to me, they make an effort they, when they're uh, going to work to walk mindfully from their car to uh, wherever, whatever their office is, whatever they're doing, whatever. And uh, my response was, that's good, but why not just work on your koan as you work from your car? If there's nothing else going on, you're not having to cross streets with traffic and things like that, why not just take up the koan and walk that, walk the koan, have the koan walk you? In other words, you can drop body and mind right where you are, right as you are, right with this count, right with this breath, right with this koan. Instead of entangling on the mind road further, you can take this moment to just minutely let everything go, just by being the koan, by counting, by being this breath. By just sitting, thinking, not thinking, which is shikantaza, just this. Uh, dropping body and mind. Doesn't mean pushing anything away, forcing anything away, working to get something. The Soto teachers are right. If your aim is only attainment, you miss it completely. Even that must fall away. Just this. Just cast off your body and mind in the practice of Zazen. Not by trying to pick up your body and mind and throw them away, but just attend to this breath, to this count, to this koan. Put yourself into it without force, without strain, just steadily. Pick it up again every time you lose it. Pick it up again every time you lose it. Pick it up again every time you lose it. According to the authentic tradition of Buddhism, this personally and directly transmitted Buddha Dharma is the supreme of the supreme. When even for a short period of time you sit properly in samadhi, imprinting the Buddha seal in your three activities of deed, word, and thought. Uh, let's see if there's a note on that. The three categories of activity by body, mouth, and mind that determine karma. Uh, this is what sets our karma, cause and effect, in place. Uh, deed, what you do, word, what you say, and thought, what you think. All of these things have an effect, imprinting a certain kind of reality on our fundamental nature. And then out of that, we live those consequences. Uh, of course, karma is fluid. It can be changed moment to moment by letting go of everything and being fully present. Uh, this is what uh, Hakuin talks about uh, with the samadhi of practice. Uh, old patterns of karma are alleviated, are seen through, no longer have the same hold upon us. Uh, Hakuin, uh, who was a great Rinzai teacher, perhaps the greatest in the last 300 years in Japan, 
And uh, Dogen, the great Soto teacher, agree completely. In fact, Dogen, total, I mean, Hakuin, totally, totally loved and respected Dogen's writings when he came upon them in the uh, 1700s, early 1800s, uh, 400 years, 500 years earlier, 500 years, 600 years earlier. Uh, totally, even though he was a Hakuin was the great revitalizer of Rinzai Zen. He totally saw Dogen as one of the great ancestors. So there's no, fundamentally, there's no distinction, ultimately. Uh, it's all a matter of whether the practice is authentic, not that one is better than the other, but really it's a matter of how wholeheartedly uh, one um, enters into it and how fully the teacher enters into it, put it that way. Maybe that's narrowing it down too much, but in any case. Uh, <clears throat> when even for a short period of time you sit properly in samadhi, imprinting the Buddha seal in your three activities of deed, word, and thought, then each and everything throughout the Dharma world is the Buddha seal. This call of the crow, this stub toe, this taste of the tea, this hello, this good morning, this breath, everything, everything is the Buddha mind seal. Dogen said to move the self forward to become a one with the 10,000 things is called delusion. When the 10,000 things step in and realize themselves as the self, this is intimacy or realization. When even for a short period of time you sit properly in samadhi, imprinting the Buddha seal in your three activities of deed, word, and thought, then each and everything throughout the Dharma world is the Buddha seal, and all space without exception is enlightenment. All space without exception is enlightenment. What you've been seeking for who knows how long is always right here. It's the very place you're seeking from. The very place you're trying to get to is the place you're already seeking from. A very famous old um, story, at least in Western Zen circles, but I think it came out of Japan at some point. Maybe it didn't, but Roshi Kapital used to refer to it a lot. There was supposedly a ship out in the ocean, way out several hundred miles off the, uh, or hundred miles, off the coast of uh, Brazil, the mouth of the Amazon. And uh, the story goes, they were out of fresh water, uh, only uh, out on the ocean. Uh, and they saw another ship and they radioed or signaled with flags, however old the ship was, back when it was, uh, fresh water, please, uh, we're desperate. And the other ship said, drop your buckets where you are. What? Drop your buckets where you are. You're out on the ocean. You can't drink salt water. Drop your buckets where you are. Ah, uh, it was what they got. So they did, and they pulled it up. And it was fresh water, because they were the force of the Amazon had pushed all the way out into the ocean. Maybe they were 20 miles out, 100 miles might be, might be pushing it. In any case, drop your buckets where you are the water of life, the water you seek, is where you are. <laughs> That's the point. Drop your buckets where you are. And even for a short period of time, you sit properly in samadhi imprinting the Buddha seal. In your three activities of deed, word, thought, then each and everything throughout the Dharma world is the Buddha seal and all space without exception, right where you are, <coughs> is enlightenment. <coughs> Accordingly, it makes Buddha Tathagatas increase the Dharma joy welling from their original source and renews the adornments of the way of enlightenment. Then when all classes of all beings in the ten directions of, with all beings in the ten directions of the universe, hell dwellers, craving spirits, that's hungry ghosts, animals, fighting demons, that is asuras, 
humans and devas, gods, being all together at one time, bright and pure, in body and mind, realize the stage of absolute emancipation and reveal their original aspects. Then at that time, all things together realize in themselves the true enlightenment of the Buddhas. Uh, mythically, it said that upon the Buddha's great enlightenment, all beings experienced momentarily enlightenment. There was peace everywhere. Everything fell away for an instant for everyone. What happens far away affects us. What happens here affects that we do affects everyone and everything else. Um, Utilizing the Buddha body and immediately leaping beyond the confines of this personal enlightenment, they sit erect beneath the kingly tree of enlightenment turned simultaneously, simultaneously the great and utterly incomparable Dharma wheel and expound the ultimate and profound prajna free from all human agency. In other words, whether we work at it or not, the truth is still there. Original enlightenment, the foundation of each mind, each being, is always right there. Whether we work to realize it or not, of course, it makes a big difference personally, whether we do realize it or not. But we gain nothing. It's always been our nature. We just haven't known it. And because we don't know it, we cause ourselves and others tremendous sorrow because we act self-centeredly. And sometimes not only do we act self-centeredly, unconsciously, we can choose to be self-centered and cause great harm because it makes us feel powerful. And we see that in our world, how horribly often that mistake is made. A simple mistake in using the mind leads to what we can only call great evil, great unnecessary suffering, great harm. And of course, Practice is an antidote to that, but it's not a quick fix. We have to keep working at it. And what we do affects everyone and everything else, even as what others do affects us. But we don't know it consciously. It's beyond human agency, is what, <coughs> is what Dogen says. beyond human agency. Since, moreover, these enlightened ones in their turn enter, dire enter directly into the way of imperceptible mutual assistance, the person seated in Zazen without fail casts off body and mind, severs all the heretofore disordered and defiled thoughts and views emanating from his dis their discriminating consciousness, conforms totally with the genuine Buddha Dharma and assists universally in performing the Buddha work far and wide at each of the various places the Buddha Tathagatas teach that are as infinitely numberless as the smallest atom particles imparting universally the key transcending Buddha, vigorously promoting the Dharma whole transcending Buddha. So uh, he's again making the point that in seated in Zazen, you affect everything. Everything, everyone and everything in the universe, even as everything and everyone in the universe affects you. Now as to the whole and key things here, key is K-I. Buddhahood means not abiding in Buddhahood, but rising beyond the concept and consciousness of Buddha to save others. In other words, I've got it, really won't do. Really won't do. It does not exist apart from this transcendence let it go. Almost untranslatable, the word, the term ki, K-I, with dictionary equivalents that include spring, trigger, motive principle, potentiality, occasion, and opportunity, is often used with the term ho, ki referring to the zazen practicer, and ho to the changeless dharma. Ki indicates the dynamic. Remember, zen is, zazen is active, not passive. The dynamic Zen function at work in the Zazen described in this passage, passage as it turns upon <coughs> the person sitting, who in doing Zazen imparts the key 
K-I, change, motive, trigger, to all things. The Dharma is unchanging and manifests itself dynamically only when occasion and conditions are ripe. It's always there, but you won't know it unless conditions are ripe. And Zazen is a way of ripening your conditions so that you will know it. Another thing about that is that Buddhas and Bodhisattvas only take form, that is, exist because of human need. It's a compassionate act, a creative act. If human beings all accepted our own enlightenment from the very beginning, then there wouldn't be any need for the appearance of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Sometimes this is said in the koans is if it's such and such is realization, you cause the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas to beg for their life. There's no need, no need for them to take a special perspective and be special. It's only human need, our own human suffering, our human ignorance that brings forth out of ripeness, the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and their innate creativity of our own mind takes form in that way. <clears throat> then, then the land, trees and grasses, fence and wall, tile and pebble, and all things in the ten directions perform the work of Buddhas. The persons who share in the benefits thus produced from this wind and water all are imparted unperceived the wonderful and incomprehensible teaching and guidance of the Buddhas and all manifest their own immediate and familiar enlightenment close at hand. It is not a far off thing. How many times do we use the word intimate? It's close at hand. In uh, Blake's writings, he's speaking of Jesus, who for him was the human imagination that is beyond all logic, beyond all reason, very much like Bodhidharma's point about mind. He said, I, I'm not a god far, far off. I'm a brother and a friend. I'm not a god far off. I'm a brother and a friend. Well, this is very much the Zen view. This is intimacy. Dogen says, everyone who does this practice manifest their own immediate and familiar enlightenment close at hand. It's one's own. We just don't know it. It's not like you're going to become somebody else if you touch base with original nature. It's close at hand to you just as you are. Remember the Buddha upon his great enlightenment said, and he himself was shocked by this realization, wonder of wonders. All beings are Buddhas, just as they are right now. Only their self-centered habits of dualistic thinking prevent them from realizing this. But what a difference that makes and how much suffering has come into the world because of this era and how we human beings use our own minds. It's quite uh, sobering, tragic really, and yet that's our situation. And it's up to us to do something about it, which is what our practice offers us, a ground for doing something about it. It's not simply a passive thing. Zazen is an act. Remember, karma springs from our actions, words, and thoughts. So in doing Zazen, you are ripening your own karma towards realization and changing. We might say dropping our self-centered self is how character emerges, not by trying to become better, but by losing ourself. We find ourselves. Old literary device, anyway. Uh, since those receiving and employing this fire and water all turn round and round the Buddha making activity of original enlightenment, those who dwell and converse with them also join with one another in possessing inexhaustible Buddha virtue, spreading it ever wider, circulating the inexhaustible, unceasing, incomprehensible, and immeasurable Buddha Dharma inside and outside throughout the universe. Dogen says, this is really how it is. 
This is not theory. This is his experience, and he's telling us this is our potential as well to realize this. But it really happens whether we know it or realize it or not. Yet such things, he says, are not mingled in the perceptions of the person sitting in Zazen. Because occurring in the stillness of samadhi beyond human agency, that is beyond concept, beyond thoughts of me in here and you out there, beyond human agency or artifice, they are directly and immediately realization. If practice and realization were two different stages, as ordinary people consider them to be, they should perceive each other. Any such mingling with perceptions is not the mark of realization, for the mark of true realization is to be altogether beyond such illusion. illusion. When we're practicing, I'm not practicing. I'm the practice. The practice is realization. <clears throat> Moreover, although both the mind of the person seated in Zazen and its environment enter realization and leave realization within the stillness of samadhi, that is non-self-centered mind, as it occurs in the spirit of jijuyu, it does not disturb a single mode of dust or obstruct a single phenomenon. It takes up no space and it takes up no time. It's right now, which doesn't mean now it's also right now. Now it's also right now. It means right now. It takes up no space and it takes up no time. It does not disturb a single mode of dust or obstruct a single phenomenon. Our life goes on just as it is, but performs great and wide-ranging Buddha work and carries on the exceedingly profound recondite activities of preaching and enlightening. The trees, grasses, and land involved in this all emit a bright and shining light preaching the profound and incomprehensible Dharma. And it is endless. Trees and grasses, wall and fence, expound and exalt the Dharma for the sake of ordinary people, sages and all living beings, ordinary people, sages and all living things in turn preach and exalt the Dharma for the sake of trees, grasses, wall and fence. The realm of self-enlightenment qua enlightening others is originally filled with the characteristics of realization with no lack, no lack whatsoever. And the ways of realization continue on unceasingly. Not enough yet. Not yet enough. And yet here it is, right here, whole and perfect and complete and wonder of wonders. All beings are Buddhas, fully endowed with wisdom and virtue. And yet not enough yet. Not yet enough. It goes on unceasingly, the ways of realization. There's no lack whatsoever. Right now, what lack could there be? Do your eyes See color, do your ears hear sound? Do your knees hurt? Are you thinking thoughts of what happens next? Where's the lack? What do we seek beyond this? But it doesn't mean that's just it. It doesn't mean, oh, well, that's it. I'll just be all these things. No. <coughs> Look right into this from the foundation of practice realization beyond all human agency. Because of this, when just one person does zazen even one time, he 
gender language, they become intercept, imperceptibly one with each and all of the myriad things and permeates completely all time so that within the limitless universe, that is when the self is dropped in our practice, and it doesn't mean enlightenment, just letting that go. When even one person does this even one time, they become imperceptibly one with each and all of the myriad things and permeates completely all time, so that within the limitless universe throughout past, future, and present, they are performing the eternal and ceaseless work of guiding beings to enlightenment. It is for each and everything one and the same undifferentiated practice and the same undifferentiated realization. It's not that one is better than the other. It's a matter of authenticity. Only this is not limited to the practice of sitting alone. The sound that issues from the striking of emptiness is an endless and wondrous voice that resounds before and after the fall of the hammer. Uh, and the note says the uh, merits of enlightenment are realized not only during Zazen, but also before and after. While the Zazen is essentially for realizing shunyata or emptiness, the fundamental reality of the universe, the working of emptiness is beyond Zazen and is not affected or produced by it. And Dogen concludes, this is not limited to the side of the practicer alone. Each, get this, each and everything in its, is in its original aspect endowed with original practice. The tree practices as a tree. The dog turd on the sidewalk practices as a dog turd on the sidewalk. The star practices as star. The wind practices as wind. Uh, that's uh, my interpolation. Please don't think that's Dogen. Uh, each and everything in its original aspect is endowed with original practice. It cannot be measured or comprehended. If you try and grasp it with your mind, you limit it. How about experiencing it right now, beyond limitation? It's already there, full, whole, complete. You must understand, and this is his final word, and it's a knockout. You must understand that even if all the numberless Buddhas in the ten directions, as countless as the sands of the Ganges, mustered all their might together, and by means of Buddha wisdom, attempted to measure and totally know the merit of the Zazen of a single person, they could not know the whole of its measure. You must understand that even if all the numberless Buddhas in the ten directions, as countless as the sands of the Ganges, mustered all their might together, and by means of Buddha wisdom, attempted to measure and totally know the merit of the Zazen of a single person, they could not know the whole of its measure. 